Mrs Strange sent me a message to say, have you spotted this, Mr Smith? Have you spotted that there's going to be a lunar eclipse on Pi Day? And I had no idea that was the case. And I didn't even know whether I could make a connection between Pi Day and a lunar eclipse. And so I wasn't really sure whether we should go for it this year. And then I came into the math space. And I headed towards the sink. And in the sink, I found two mugs. One belongs to Dr. Taylor. It's an Egyptian mug. And it's made by a company called Porcelain International. And the other one, you would not believe this. Look at that. Dr. Taylor's mug, Porcelain International, PI. And here we go. Luna, it's a sign. And so I decided, let's see if we can capture this lunar eclipse on Pi Day. But first, I needed to find an expert who could tell me what we're going to be looking for. Hello everyone, it's uh, Ali Bruce here. So I'm the planetarium manager at Dynamic Earth. And if you cannot see me very well, that's totally fine because I want to focus on hopefully something similar to what you might be seeing if you can catch a piece of this partial lunar eclipse. Um, now the moon is going to be very low down, so we're talking only about the size of your fist above the horizon when this thing starts going. And it's going to take a little bit of time, and as it's getting better, the moon will be sinking into twilight uh, as it vanishes behind the horizon. So if you are very, very lucky, you will get a sense of the moon getting slightly darker on the left-hand side. And if you're really lucky, you may see some colour change in there as well. Maybe it gets slightly redder. Now, that red colour is partly the fault of Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so there's a bit of dust in the air, scatters the light around, which is the reason sunsets tend to look more red. Um, now, that is what is turning the moon that reddy colour. So if you're really lucky, you will get a piece of that as well. And while you're trying to keep an eye out for the moon looking as good as possible, if you're wondering why we don't get eclipses every single time we get to new moon phase, uh, that's actually to do with the, the way the moon orbits planet Earth. It doesn't orbit in exactly the same plane that the Earth and the Sun orbit around each other. It's slightly tilted. And that means most of the time the moon passes slightly too high or slightly too low of the Sun from our point of view. So eclipses are a little bit rare and that's why it's worth chasing this one. So good luck and I hope you catch it. Otherwise, uh, come in and see us in the planetarium and we'll try and show you it on the dome as well. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at this amazing National Geographic video. So a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth blocks some or all of the Sun's direct light from reaching the Moon. This cosmic event only takes place during a full Moon, which happens once every 29 and a half days, or the length of one full orbit of the Moon around the Earth. So why don't we have an eclipse every month? Well, the Moon's orbit is tilted a few degrees in relation to the Earth. So the Earth, the Moon and the Sun, they don't always align. When the Earth does eclipse the Sun, it casts two types of shadow on the Moon. A larger shadow known as the penumbra and a smaller, darker shadow known as the umbra. There are three types of lunar eclipses. The first is a total lunar eclipse. That's when the Sun, the Moon and the Earth are in perfect alignment and the Moon falls within the Earth's umbral shadow. Total lunar eclipses are the most striking of the three types because they turn the Moon a sunset red. While the shorter blue wavelengths of light are scattered outward by the Earth's atmosphere, the longer red wavelengths are refracted or bent inward towards the Moon, making it appear red. The brightness of the moon's red glow depends on how much dust and clouds are in the Earth's atmosphere. If there's a volcano, like Loudon Hill used to be, ash can block out enough light to render the moon a darker red or even near black. A partial lunar eclipse, that's the second type, and the one that we've got this Pi Day, that's when the Earth, moon and sun don't perfectly align, so only part of the moon passes into the Earth's umbra. Earth's shadow appears very dark on the side of the moon facing the Earth. And lastly, a penumbral lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes through Earth's penumbral shadow. This kind of event is so subtle that most people don't even notice it. The moon will appear just slightly darker than normal. 
Lunar eclipses occur up to three times a year and they can be observed from anywhere on the Earth where it's night time. Unlike during a solar eclipse, it's safe to look at the moon with the naked eye during a lunar eclipse. It's only because of the distances of the sun and the moon from the Earth that we're able to even witness total lunar eclipses. The moon's actually inching away from the Earth each year. And so at one point in the future, we'll not be able to see that. But that's billions of years from now, so don't worry. For just now, we get to enjoy something that's only going to happen three times this century. A lunar eclipse happening on Pi Day. So where did we choose to try and catch a glimpse of this Pi Day lunar eclipse? Well, we knew that we had to be at altitude. And so we picked Loudoun Hill. It's a historic hill nearby. It's actually an old volcanic plug. And its height, it's 316 metres. So close to the 314 that would have made Mr Smith particularly excited. And once we'd identified that, we set our alarm clocks ready for Pi O'Clock, as all good geeks do when there's a trip ahead. Once we got on the bus and loaded in, Mr Adams at the steering wheel, we headed off to Loudoun Hill. At the bottom of the hill, in pitch dark, there they were. 20 S2 pupils with their hats and their torches, ready to climb the hill. We had two other experts with us, two intrepid explorers, Mr White and Mr Hunter. And so they accompanied us as we made our way up Loudoun Hill. We did it in the dark and the shots that you're seeing just now were taken by Fraser, one of my friends who brought his drone along to capture some of the footage. This is obviously not during the dark. This is a few minutes after the sun has begun to rise. And you can see, if you look very carefully, if you look at the top of this hill, you'll see the shining lights. You'll see all of the excited mathematicians who have assembled at the top of that hill at the crack of dawn, literally, literally at the crack of dawn, to try and catch a glimpse of this lunar eclipse. But alas, the clouds beat us. The Scottish weather put a dampener on our lunar eclipse views. It didn't stop the kids from singing at the top. It didn't stop us from having a brilliant time. But we just didn't manage to capture that wee shadow on the moon as it began to fall below the horizon. Here's a wee photo of us at the top. We've not seen the Pi Day lunar eclipse, but we're still celebrating. Look at the smiles on everyone's face. We've had a great time. And we're holding this ridiculous flag, a gift that I was given kindly by Alicia and Alicia in S3. Thanks, girls. So, maybe it's over to another expert. We should have consulted Kirsty before we went up that hill because she knows a thing or two about weather. Hello, I'm Kirsty McCabe and I am a broadcast meteorologist, a weather presenter, and I thought I'd give you a little look behind the scenes here. I'm at the BBC this morning. Now, behind me, it's just a green screen. Um, in front of me, though, it's a bit of a different story. If I spin round, then you can probably make out the camera there. Um, that's a few screens as well. And that's how I know what I'm up to, because there's no auto cue for weather. You may be interested to know that, that we just chat and tell the weather story. But how do we know the weather story? Well, that requires quite a bit of maths. Um, let's start at the beginning. How did I become a weather presenter? Well, I actually grew up in Kilmarnock. I went to Annan Hill Primary and then Grange Academy and then I decided to study geophysics at Edinburgh University and geophysics is the study of earthquakes and volcanoes so I spent a lot of time looking at the ground but after that I decided actually I really was interested in weather and meteorology so I switched my attentions to the skies and went to the Met Office to train as a forecaster. So with that in mind why do I need maths and physics? Well, in order to understand how the weather works, how the atmosphere works, it involves a lot of maths. And you need to know that if you're going to be able to understand all the output from the supercomputer, from all the forecasts. And then you need to understand that in order to tell people what the weather's going to do. So these days I present and produce the weather for places like the BBC, Sky News, Metro Weather and the Royal Meteorological Society. 
Um, I do little articles about why is the sky blue, how a rainbow was formed, but all of it comes back to maths. So my top tips then for Pi Day, if you'd like to be a weather presenter, then you need to study maths and physics. Happy Pi Day. And so with Pi Day almost over for another year, it would not be a mathsy event if Mr Smith hadn't put together another silly math song. Here we go. Pie me to the moon, I'm just a geek among the stars. That sphere surface areas, four pi times a couple of hours. In other words, if it's flat. In other words, you just use that. Fill the moon with cheese. What's the volume of that thing? The formulas in National 5. Here's some lyrics you can sing. In other words, four thirds pi. Times are cubed. Give it a try. The moon goes round the earth, but its journey isn't round. Thankfully, Pi is still involved in its orbit, I have found. In other words, an ellipse. Happy Pi Day, lunar eclipse.